Hey guys, welcome back to another MedBoys video. Today we're doing a Q&A about Nimitz's first year in medical school from the questions that you guys asked on Instagram. So let's do it. So uh, how do you feel? You've done first year. It's pretty normal. <laughs> Come on now, dog. Come on, man. All right, what is your favorite moment of your first year in medical school? I know this seems a little like counterintuitive, but probably the first day of medical school is probably my favorite uh. moment um, because that was the day of the stethoscope ceremony, which I'm sure as all of you have seen all those clips and pictures of us, um, it, it's a very special moment. All right, next question. Someone asked, what is the social life like in med school? Honestly, you'd be surprised how, how good the social life is. Like everyone wants to go out, everyone wants to do stuff. It's pretty good. Everyone wants to talk to each other because mm -hmm. it's such a, it's just 200 people. So you see these people every day. So you're going to want to be friends. Mm -hmm. Oh, how many hours in a day do you study? Um, probably. This, this, this is not for the camera. Like be real. How many <laughs> hours in a day do you study? Uh, I've got to admit, it's probably less than mm -hmm. like my third year of undergrad. It's, it's maybe like one or two hours a day. And then a lot more when there's tests. Because like with the tests on Monday, the Saturday and Sunday are really bad. It's like eight hours of studying every day. How many hours of sleep do you get? You could get a lot of sleep in medical school. I know mm. people think that like you can't. Yeah, yeah, and it's I'm busy. talking about you. Yeah, but I'm just saying, if you want to sleep eight hours every day, yeah. you can sleep eight hours. But I'm not sleeping eight hours, so it's probably around six. Uh, so do you think that you were able to have a balanced life in med school? Yeah, I, I think you can, but I think you you kind of have to get your priorities straight. Like you have to first think, that, okay, what's my number one priority in that school? Um, mm -hmm. So you need to put that above everything else. And then I think scheduling really helps. Like sometimes it can get really hectic when it's like you have this commitment and then this meeting and then that meeting. Um, so using Google Calendar and then being honest with everyone kind of helps because they understand that. Someone asked, do you know pre-med students in your cohort? We're in med school with less than a 3.9 GPA. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think there's a misconception out there. I know it's because UFT released that presentation where they said they don't take anyone under a 3.89. No. But it's not like that. I know many people who actually have under a 3.9. Mm. So I think, especially if you have a GPA under that 3.9, it's definitely not the end of the world. And since we're talking about that, what do you think made your med school application stand out? Well, I think we, we had Harsh on in our podcast. Mm -hmm. um, we had this podcast with a med student who was also a file reviewer. And what he said is normally there isn't one thing that makes you stand out. It's normally the combination of things. Mm -hmm. If I had to point to one thing, as you know, it's the organization that we started called Blankets for TO, uh, where me and Naman and Rushal started this organization that helps homeless people here in Toronto. And I think it was just really helpful because we could use that to talk about anything. So it helped mm -hmm. my interviews, helped my essays, my ABS, the entire thing. I think MedBoys itself helps as well because we interviewed a lot of like healthcare professionals and that helps because it helps show that you're good at public speaking and, and talking to other people. Are you doing anything med related this summer? Um, yeah, I am. I'm doing research related to liver transplants and how it's affected by diabetes and these other things. Okay, I think this is a pretty interesting question because I feel like we felt this coming into UFT in general, like for our undergrad. Like how do you deal with imposter syndrome? Well, imposter syndrome, I think it's pretty justified for a lot of people. Um, I think the one thing you have to think of is like, you got in for a reason mm -hmm. and, it's, and they picked you for a reason. So that must be right. They didn't pick you, it wasn't a mistake. So I think if you just think of it like that, where, um, you think that, yes, I got picked and I deserve this, then I don't think there should be any imposter syndrome. Yeah. And when it does arise, you, I think what really helps is just preparing more, making sure you do well in school and that helps reinforce mm. the reasons that you're in. What is a specialty that you're currently interested in after doing some shadowing? I know all of us have always been interested in surgery and, and it's always been something we've wanted to do, neurosurgery. Mm -hmm. It's a seven year residency, as, as we all know. Um, I think that still that door still isn't closed. I'm trying to figure out how bad it really is in terms of lifestyle, but I think all of us would really love surgery if we went into it. Yeah, I think the thing with us is like, we also kind of want to do stuff on the sides like med boys and stuff, and that takes up a lot of time. Um, so surgery probably wouldn't be the best for us, but 
it's also something that we're most interested in something that we look forward to since high school so it's a bit of a dilemma but i think once we get into the the, the groove of things we'll understand you kind of have to decide whether you want to commit everything to medicine yeah. or if you want to like not leave out anything in medicine but um whether you want to leave some time to do other stuff mm. and i think that's a very hard choice to make because we obviously like want to care about patients we want to make people better yeah. but we have to make that choice um and i think it, it'll come <laughs> so someone asked any casper help please casper is actually one of the most underrated tests that these guys put like it's so yeah. important but people really don't pay attention to it um what I would recommend is actually take time to prepare for this because people say you can't study for it, which is just a lie and a secret. I don't know if I can I say it. Yeah, we're going to release it soon. soon. <laughs> OK, yeah. So I, I don't think I was supposed to say this, um, but we have some Casper worksheets coming out that will help you guys with your preparation. Yeah. So since you've talked about the worksheets already, can you tell us more what the worksheets are going to be about? Yeah. So since we have so many Casper videos, and I think our Casper videos are probably the best ones on the platform because of how much support we've been getting. Um, we think that having these supplementary materials will really help our audience. Mm -hmm. And because of that, it's kind of like a guided study plan for people. And um, we're going to make sure that's very cheap so everyone can access it. Mm -hmm. How would you say the professors are? Do you think they're mean or nice, understanding? every week we have a different subject or every two weeks so let's say one week's cardiology the next week is respirology so each professor is different for those things sometimes we even have like three professors in the same week so they're all doctors uh for the most part and i feel all of them are really nice like you can go and ask questions you can ask them to shadow um some of them are better teachers than others mm -hmm. um, but overall i think the faculty does a great job to get people that was the most politically correct yes. answer yes, that was that was the best answer i could have given yeah someone asked something that you would have done differently in your first year of med school i think what i would have done differently is kind of just chilled out a little bit more like i think i was too stressed about things that i shouldn't have been stressed about mm -hmm. especially because like so i've known Nami and Rushal since high school we've been together grade 9 and 10 and then we weren't together grade 11 12 but then we were together for all of undergrad so then now going into this new environment was was pretty intimidating in the start especially because everyone was like older than me so i was worried about making friends yeah. and getting along because i was commuting as well but i think the way the med format is structured they kind of force you to make friends mm -hmm. so i think I, if i was just less worried about these kinds of things less worried about how my grades are going to be i think it'd be a lot mm -hmm. better um so someone said, what is the hardest part of medical school? For me, the hardest part has been figuring out my specialty because people keep telling me, they're like, you're in your first year, don't worry about anything. It's still the start of medical school. You have so many uh, more years to go. And then now I'm done first year. And it, it doesn't feel like it was that long ago that I started. So I was really trying to figure out what I like, what I don't like, but shadowing made me interested in more things than I was interested in, in the mm -hmm. start. So I don't know if it was helpful. Because every shadowing placement I went to was interesting. Yeah, yeah. So now I, I'm more confused. I just, I just want to bring this up. So we recently started watching this show called The Good Doctor. You guys might have watched it. We put it in a lot of our TikToks. So I remember after watching a few like shows, um, Nimi comes up to me and he's like, bro, like surgery doesn't look that bad. <laughs> <laughs> How did you prepare for your interview? Well, we have a lot of videos on this already. If you guys want to go see them, they're very high quality videos. We put a lot of effort into them. The key is just to practice as much as you can do what we're doing right now. Record yourself and then look back at it to see what are the problems when you're talking? Are you looking at the camera? Are you making eye contact? Essentially, what you want to think of is whether the interviewer will look at you and think this person deserves to be a doctor or this person will be a great doctor. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking to the camera, Try to emulate that. Try to show them that you'll be a great doctor. And I know you've been in a, quite a few interviews as well. So what do you yeah. want to say about that? Yeah, no, it's exactly the same thing. Like You have to get used to yourself on camera, especially after COVID. Do you think it's better that interviews are online or in person? Honestly, I've thought about this a lot. And I think it would have been better if we had interviews in person, just so that you're able to show yourself you know, to the person. 
I'm not trying to show off my suit or anything, <laughs> but like I have a nice suit. Yeah. No, I agree because you you get there are like nonverbal cues that yeah, make yeah. people want to talk to you, want people that that make you them like you. But yeah. also there's things that are bad too, like you have to travel to McMaster, for example, yeah, exactly. or you travel to Queens. That yeah. would make it a lot harder. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also it's just I think it's lower stress. This is an interesting one. Do you need an iPad for medical school? So I thought that because I used to watch a lot of Karma Medic videos and, yeah. and I thought Notion, iPad, Notability, these are essentials for medical school. Yeah. And I think I probably took notes on my iPad for a week because <laughs> I, I, I hate taking notes yeah. so much. Honestly, it's dependent on the person, but it didn't work for us. Where do you see med boys in the future? Uh, well, at a million subscribers. <laughs> Um, no, Wait, we, we didn't officially say thanks to everyone yeah. for 2,000 subscribers. We recently hit it. Yeah, we just hit yeah. 2,000 subscribers. So thank you to everyone for watching. Thank you for supporting us. Anyways, I think this is a good point to stop the video. Uh, we've answered a lot of the questions that you guys asked on Instagram. So make sure you ask you guys ask us more questions on Instagram. Follow us on Instagram. And make sure to look out for the Casper worksheets that we'll be releasing soon. See you guys next Monday.